Hey guys, what's up? Ice Rider here. Um, I've got some Crisis 2 gameplay here, something you would probably not expect. You would probably think that I would be posting Battlefield Hardline or something like that. Uh, but at the time that I was playing this, I wasn't in the Hardline beta yet, uh, which now luckily I did get a code and uh, I'm going to be showing you some of that probably as well. Um, but for now I was playing Crisis 2, um, one of my favorite games actually. Servers are being shut down, so if you feel the need of going back to Crisis 2, now is your chance. Um, so, either way, uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about Crisis 2, what I did like about it and what not. Um, why am I going to do this? Uh, because on E3 we saw a new game called Homefront 2, or actually it's not called Homefront 2, I think it's uh, Homefront Revolution or Homefront Rebellion, or something along those lines. And uh, it's also being developed by Crytek, which of course made Crisis 2 and Crisis 3, and obviously Crisis 1 as well. And some things that I did like about Crisis 2, um, like for one, the setting I thought was really amazing, like the, the whole like broken down city, um, like somewhat in the future, but like a dark future. I, I kind of really like those post-apocalyptic style settings. Uh, that's also why I did like the Stalker franchise and the Metro franchise. Um, if you never heard about Stalker, I think it's also a couple of years old now. Um, basically it, it was like a sort of open world survival style shooter. Um, pretty sure you can also, if you want to try it out, uh, pick it up for pretty cheap now uh, on Steam or something like that. And, you know, I, I do recommend it. It's a great game. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I did like the setting, and um, it looks like for um, Homefront 2 it's uh, like it's gonna have a similar setting like that uh, in the future. I, I do like it when it's um, when the future is not completely unrealistic, like... Uh, I guess you could say that Crisis had an unrealistic setting with the whole nanosuit and aliens, but... Um, to me it was still like semi-realistic, you didn't have fucking laser rifles and and stuff like that, so I I do enjoy it when it like is still a little bit realistic. And uh, it, it looks like Homefront 2 is gonna be fitting in that category and also what I did quite like about Crisis 2 is um, like the whole um, system behind like the game. You had your energy, uh, which you can see in the bottom right screen right now, uh, bottom right corner of the screen, of course. And basically that was used for every action that you did in the game, basically. Um, so if you go into armor mode, that would use um, energy. If you go into stealth mode, if you sprint, if you jump, everything would, would use that energy bar. And um, I thought that was a great idea. It, uh, you had to be very tactical at your choices, um, so you don't run out of energy in the middle of combat, because that would get you killed a lot of the time. Uh, in Crisis 3 they sadly did dumb that down a whole lot, so you could jump and run without even consuming energy, and uh, stealth and armor both had a separate energy bar, so... In my opinion you didn't really have to think in the game. Well. At least not in that way, you obviously had to think as well if you wanted to do somewhat well. So one thing that I wasn't quite happy about in Crisis 2 and Crisis 3 is uh, the support after release, so patches, updates, that kind of stuff. So in Crisis 2 for instance, they did patching um, for I believe about half a year after release and then they well, they, they had it somewhat balanced and stuff. It still had a couple bugs, like the, the Scar Laser bug, which gave you a gun that, while aimed down sights, you could sight to sight strafe uh, as fast as you would normally do while you're not aimed down sights, which did give you a huge advantage over pretty much any other gun in the game. Um, so they, they still had some bad stuff in there, but um, then, you know, they... Apart from that, it was rather well balanced. Uh, then later on they did release a DLC uh, that introduced a new gun that was pretty overpowered and they didn't bother balancing it whatsoever, which is probably one of the major reasons why Crisis 2 died down. So what I would like to see in Homefront 2 is uh, proper support after release and 
hopefully actually releasing the game in a finished state, which seems to be very rare with games nowadays. Um, you seem to see more and more like unfinished games or not exactly original sequels and that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, Homefront 2, it, it looks fairly different to Homefront 1 from what I've seen so far. Uh, it's a open world single player game and co-op game, I suppose. It doesn't have a multiplayer, so uh, the balancing part might not be all that important, but I, I hope they do release it in a finished state and actually support it if they do that. Um, I think it could be a really great game. It's actually one of the few games this year from E3 that I'm really excited about. Uh, the other one would probably be um, The Division, which uh, looks really pretty and um, I guess we'll have to wait if the, the release version looks all that pretty as well and uh, doesn't have a drop in visual quality as it was the case with Watch Dogs. Uh, but yeah, that was basically my thoughts on Crisis 2 and some of the new games from E3 this year. If you do like these sort of old-school commentary type gameplay videos, then do leave me a comment to tell me that. So, I'm gonna make more. Uh, if you don't, feel free to tell me, of course, as well. And um, I hope to see you on my next video. Have a great time, and enjoy the rest of the video. Goodbye.